All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1979 Dodge Lil Red Express. Up front is a 360 cubic inch V8 and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving the Lil Red Express for a couple of reasons, but mainly this truck was super, super special and only manufactured for two years, 1978 and 1979. And its whole reason for manufacture was just to be a hot rod. <laughs> yeah so back in the 70s that's when the american government started really cracking down on emissions in 1975 they required cars to have catalytic converters which really cut down on performance however dodge found a loophole where if you put it in a truck if you built a truck it didn't need a catalytic converter yet and if it was over 6,000 pounds it didn't need a catalytic converter so because it was a truck they didn't have to abide by any emissions laws, so they could build whatever the heck they wanted. Now, in 1978, there was no CAT, but for the 1979 Little Red Express, it did come with a catalytic converter, so this did come with one from the factory, but it's since been removed. So for all intended purposes, this is really a 78. And that 360, baby. <laughs> oh, and the brakes. God, the brakes are so overly good. It scares the crap out of me. Oh God, the steering is vague. The brakes are great. This is, I mean, this is really a full-time vehicle that you have to drive. This isn't something you can really just passively get in, throw the keys to your neighbor if they have to get lumber. No, there's a couple prerequisites when you get behind the wheel. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are looking to help out the channel, there are a couple links in the description below from our awesome sponsors. One of which is Cash for Cars if you're looking to sell your used car. One is from Fixed, a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor to help diagnose your vehicle. And another from Conplates. Conplates is a suction cup license plate mount for your vehicle in case you don't want to drill into your front bumper. Each purchase or quote goes towards helping the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So let's get on with the video. So let's get back to that 5.9 liter 360 cubic inch V8 up front. Makes about 225 horsepower from the factory. And at the time of production, this was the fastest American vehicle that you could buy. This, <laughs> with your little side stacks. I absolutely love the sound of it. I'm gonna try to brake like a normal human being now. <laughs> Not the easiest thing to do. I love the sound of it because my first car was a second gen Dodge Ram that also had a 5.9 liter V8 from Mopar. They're similar blocks, of course, they're you know 20 years apart, but it sounds so good. It is carbureted. So this one has a an Edelbrock put onto it, but originally from the factory, they came with four barrel carbs, which is pretty impressive and nice for the 1970s. Like I said, paired to a three-speed automatic, it is pretty stout. From what I've heard, it's a fairly bulletproof transmission, which usually is not synonymous with Mopar, is a bulletproof transmission but actually it's a really good transmission. We cruised on the highway doing about 80. It was screaming, but it'll do it. That's the thing. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but it will do it if you want to drive it on the highway. It keeps up with modern vehicles. Last but not least, of course, the Low Red Express is rear wheel drive. However, there was a Warlock truck that you could get that was four wheel drive. So you could get something in the same vein that was four wheel drive, but this is the little Red Express, baby. This is rear wheel all day. <laughs> it just, it makes you giggle. I mean, and that's really the whole point of this truck, but we'll talk about that towards the end. Let's talk about the interior really quickly because there's not much to talk about. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. Off to the left, I actually have alternator current, fuel, temperature and oil pressure. Then I have a speedometer in the middle and a radio off to the right. Now, of course, the radio has since been changed out for something modern with USB and Bluetooth, but that's where the factory radio would go. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it. This is the factory steering wheel. There's a horn button in the middle, but this predates airbags by almost two decades. I do have like a little transmission indicator on the top of the steering column, but I mean, who trusts that? On the door, I do have my crank for the window, and I do have little smoker windows, which is really nice. You can vent it, get a little bit of that air moving because this truck actually doesn't have AC. You could option AC, but it doesn't have it. 
To the right of me, I do have some climate controls for the heat, but like I said, this truck does not have AC. Now, because the Lil Red Express doesn't have any cup holders, it unfortunately fails the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> Now, the seats are super comfortable. 70s American cars knew what comfort meant, and they are really comfortable, and the driver's seat is actually adjustable, which is kind of hard to find in pickup trucks from this era, mainly like the Ford Courier that I drove. Well, it was really a Mazda Repu, but Ford Courier chassis, you can't really adjust it. You are smashed into that thing like a sardine, and you actually get tons and tons of space in this interior. So I do get an armrest in the center as well as a third seat, so it does have a bench seat if you wanna bring a third person in the little red express. In terms of interior, that's really it. It is very spacious. Dodge trucks have always been very good at offering tons of space. You could fit two people in here super comfortably, but since we don't have back seats, we're just gonna hop around and talk about the bed, and then we'll talk about the looks. The bed, this is kind of the only bed this truck will ever have because they don't make these beds anymore. You can't go on LMC truck and get new beds. Normally you would have nice, pieces of wood, red wood that would go there. Uh, just haven't gone around to it, I don't know if I ever would. Um, but instead of this being like a concourse truck, this truck is what I use to pick up lawnmowers, to pick up sod, gravel, and stuff like that. This is my workhorse. You know, if I gotta go out and pick up a 327 Chevy, I'm gonna put the engine right back there. You know, I've got transmissions to pick up. This is what I'm gonna take. This is what gets all the bumps and bruises. If I hit a tree, not a big deal. I'll just take a hammer and bump out the dents. So normally with these trucks, you could tell that they're a little red express because they'll have like a, a nice decal, the pinstriping along the fenders. It'll say little red on the back. Obviously I haven't gone around to doing that, but I have an artist friend uh, in Columbia, Missouri where I live and shout out to her, Adrian Luther on Instagram. If you want cool decals done or custom made handwork paint jobs, she's the girl to hit up. Um, but instead of it saying Little Red Express, it's actually going to say Little Ratty Express. So it's going to be like a little rat rod. Um, obviously, when you look at it, it's not pristine. It's not show quality. It's got bumps and bruises, paint's fading, a really crappy paint job, but whatever. Not a pristine example of it, but I don't know. You can't look at this and not smile, right? So there it is. My Little Red Express. Had this since I was 13 years old. So my pride and joy. I love the look of this truck. It's so iconic. It just looks so cool with the stacks on the side. Those exhaust stacks are factory. Those are from Dodge. They gave you these sweet exhaust stacks, which I absolutely love. And it makes it so, as soon as you look at this truck, you know exactly what you're looking at, which I think is just the coolest thing in the world. What other truck has side stacks from the factory? It's something you don't see anymore. Something else is you can tell the front end is slightly different from the 1978. The 1978 has single headlights while this has dual headlights. So something just to note there. Now for 1978, they made about 2,500 of these, I believe, and around 5,000 for 1979. So 1979s are actually a little bit more common, but still at 5,000 units 40 years ago. They're they're not common today. So now we got to get to my final thoughts here on the Lil Red Express, which yes, that's its actual name. I, I'm not like nicknaming this truck. I love this thing. I love mainly what this thing stands for. I'm not in love with driving it. I'm a little nervous with the brakes and the vague steering. Look at the steering. I'm still going straight doing this. <laughs> that's not right. But I love what this truck stands for. This is literally built just to bend the rules, to get around emissions. That's it. And so what's really interesting is today, everyone always praises the Hellcat for being the last true muscle car to come from Dodge. And they're really pushing boundaries, but Mopar has been pushing boundaries for at least 40 years. It's just so cool to see. This thing puts a dumb, stupid grin on your face every time you drive it, every time you ride in it, and every time you hit the brakes. Cause this is me tapping the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes are so strong. <laughs> I hit my head on the back window. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah. That's what I love. This thing, as the owner Roy has pointed out, this is cherry pie and baseball. This is what America is. They put a dumb, stupid, lazy, big V8 up front. They saw, hey, we need catalytic converters. 
ah, let's find a way around it. Oh, let's just say it's 6,000 pounds. This thing actually isn't 6,000 pounds, but they said it was, so the government was like, all right, no cat. So then Mopar was like, all right, cool, run it, I guess. And that they did. <laughs> This is when cars were just solely built for fun. This breaks the rules. This is the true outlaw. And this is the first sport truck. Later, we got the SVT Lightning, which was great. And the Dodge SRT10, which was a Viper engine, really designed by Lamborghini, put into a pickup truck, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. But this was the original. This was the first truly sport truck built not for towing, not for farm use, not for utilitarian purposes, but just built as literally what they called a boy's toy. This was just a men's toy. This was something you bought to have fun and to mess with your friends and to go on drives and annoy your neighbors. That was literally the point of this truck. And I love it. I love it through and through. We're out here in rural Missouri or Kansas. I don't know. We're somewhere along the border and it's just here for a good time. I'm here with my friend Roy. Haven't seen him in a long time. <laughs> Goodbye, Honda Pilot! <laughs> oh, this thing is stupid, but it's fun. I love it. I love it. So huge thank you to Roy for letting me take this thing out. This thing is absolutely awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.